Hi everyone and welcome back to Exploring AWS. Now I want you to open up your browser and navigate over to aws.amazon.com forward slash ec2 forward slash pricing. Understanding what you're going to be charged for your EC2 instances is probably one of the most important things that you can that you can know as you start to deploy resources in the cloud, either by yourself or uh, for your organization. If it's by yourself, you can only be yelled at by your significant other, so it doesn't really matter. If it's for your organization, well, then your boss can tell you, hey, you know, this is went over budget, we have a problem. So there are six different pricing models available for your EC2 instance. And when I say six, I'm including the free tier. So the, the, the first one, let's talk about that free tier. Now, this is not something where you're just going to go light up any instance you want forever and leave it running forever and not, not care about it. The free tier comes with some limitations. First of all, you're only going to get 750 hours for each month for one year. So this is not something where this instance is going to be able to stay up and running forever. The other thing to think about is the amount of resources you're actually going to get. So typically the free tier is going to come with one virtual CPU and it's going to come with one gig of RAM. So it's not typically going to have an unlimited amount of resources. You also have to take into account the actual storage. So you may be charged for the storage uh, separately if you decide to say, "Hey, I, you know, I need a, a 100 gig, you know, 100 gig drive or something like that." Typically, there there's uh, there's storage limitations as well. But the the important things that I want you to remember are the CPU and the gig and, and the RAM. The free tier is not just going to give you anything uh, you you want forever. These are going to typically be your T2.micro instances. So when you go and you light up. An instance, you're going to be able to pick t2.micro, and that's going to give you your free instance. Now, <clears throat> as we scroll down on the page, we're going to see some more options that we have. So let's talk about this on-demand instance for a minute. Now, the on-demand is going to is going to be great because you have no commitment. As we start to talk about uh, reserved instances and savings plans, these all come. If you, if you look here, this one comes with a one or a three-year term or agreement. It's the same thing with the reserved instance. So the thing is, is that you may not have, uh, you may not want to have a, a one-year agreement that, hey, this instance is going to stay up for a dedicated amount of time. You may not have that. So think about a development instance, right? So we have a developer that's, that's testing out a new web application and they, uh, they don't know how long this instance is going to be up and running for. So on-demand is a great option for this where we turn on an instance where we don't know how, how long it's going to be used. We don't know what the usage is really going to be. Is it going to be a heavily visited website? Is it not going to be a heavily visited website? Is there going to be ups and downs? And, you know, we think about the resource utilization. Are we going to see this on the, on the usage chart? We really don't know what we're going to need. And so on demand is a really great option for that, where you can turn on an instance. Uh, you're going to be charged hourly rates for that instance. Uh, by the way, sorry if I just crossed that out. Let me, let me do that again. Uh, you're going to be charged hourly rates for that instance. So just like when we were turning up our EC2 instances, we saw, you know, some were 30 cents an hour, some were, you know, 50 cents an hour, some were 10 cents an hour, whatever it is, um, you're going to be charged for that. Now, Again, this is great because it's a flexible workload where you don't have to have any upfront long-term commitment. But the other thing about this is that this is really great for something where you just don't know what kind of usage you're going to get, but it can't be stopped. So in other words, I have a web server where it needs to stay up. I can't just go in and, and turn it off when it's not being used. Um, I, you know, I, I can't just take it down off hours because not a lot of people are visiting it. So I need to keep it up and running, but... I don't have a dedicated time of when it's going to be used the most. And, you know, and also, you know, I, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this website. It could be five years. It could be 10 minutes. I really don't know. So on demand is a really great, uh, great option for that. Then you have, uh, and I'm going to just go in order here uh, on the page. I don't want to jump around. I'm going to go in order, even though from a pricing perspective, it would make more sense for me to go another route. But again, I'm going to go with the order that's on the page here. So then you have spot instances. Now, a spot instance is where you're going to actually put in a bid. So there's going to be a bid price for these spot instances. And essentially what they are is they are leftover on-demand resources where you can get 90% off of that on-demand resource. Okay. But the thing is, is that it has to be, it has to be better than the bid price. So if you have, if there's a bid, think about an auction like Netflix, right? You put in a bid, if you win, you get the resource. The thing is, is that if the bid price changes, um, 
your instance is going to be terminated. So let's say I put in a bid of $100, right? We'll make up the math. Let's say I put in a bid price of $100 and the the current bid price is, uh, you know, 80. I'm going to get that resource because I put in $100. Awesome. So I get that resource. But if all of a sudden the bid price changes to $120 and my max was 100, then my instance is going to get terminated and then those resources are going to go to someone else. So Again, this is a really good, really great way to get 90% off some really beef and resources because you when you when you think about what you're getting here, you know, think about getting a resource with, you know, 30 gigs of RAM or something like that, right? Uh, or or you know, 16 virtual CPUs. I mean, you, you know, you can get a pretty cranking box for 90% off. So you don't have to pay the full fee. The thing is, is that it has to be a resource where, you know, you don't mind it getting torn down or terminated in the middle. So this may be something where you need a quick, where, where, let me back up, where you need a very high amount of resources very, very quickly to run like a batch job or a batch script or something like that, where it's just going to go pull a bunch of data, run this script, and then it's done and you're good to go. You don't mind it being terminated, right? So this is where, you know, a spot instance is really, really good. The thing about a spot instance though, and, and this is where you need to pay attention, is that it is not good for like production websites where, you know, this, this production website needs to be up, you know, at eight o'clock in the morning, or maybe this is an internal, um, you know, portal of some kind, something along those lines where I have a server that needs to be up at eight o'clock in the morning, uh, during peak usage times, and then it can be turned down from at, at five o'clock. So eight to five, um, you may find that your spot resources runs from like 11 to two or something like that based on the resource availability. And again, based on that bid price. So it needs to be a resource that has flexible pricing. This isn't going to be for something like your production websites that are going to be up and running all the time. Uh, and they need to be running all the time. Scroll down a little bit here, savings plans. Now, saving plans are really, really good for making a um, making a commitment that, hey, I'm going to have a, a dedicated um, host and I'm going to pay this up front and I'm going to commit to this for three years or one year. You can get a good amount of savings with a savings plan because you're actually making a commitment on the resources that you have. So a savings plan is another good way for you to save a little bit of money, but again, you have to make that commitment of one to three years, okay? Now I'm gonna skip the reserved instances because we're gonna spend a little bit more time there. I know I said I wasn't gonna skip and then I lied to you. I was just kidding. Um, we're gonna come down to dedicated resources here just for one second. A dedicated resource should be pretty self-explanatory, all right? This is where you're gonna have a server. Maybe you have some compliance issues or something like that. Let me just scroll down a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Um, maybe you have some compliance issues where, you know, you have to say, hey, yes, we're maintaining the data on that server. We maintain everything about that server. You know, it's essentially ours. It's just hosted in another data center. This is where you can go with a dedicated host. This is where you'd have to provide your own licensing, your own software costs, everything. They're giving you a dedicated server. But again, it's your licenses, right? So you're going to have to pay for the Microsoft license. You're going to have to pay for, you know, the database server license, etc. Now, you can purchase these on demand if you want to, but essentially, these are dedicated. These are your hosts. These are your servers. They're not shared across anybody. There's no other tenant or anything like that that's on this server. So typically, where I see this is really where I have a customer that has a, a compliance question, a compliance, not a question, but a, a compliance uh, requirement where they need to own that server, but they don't have the ability to put it in their own data center, and so they're going to get a dedicated host from, from Amazon. Now, let's look at the reserved instances. We're going to spend a little bit of time here because I think the reserved instances just have a little bit more meat to them. Um, in the reserved instance, you can get up to 75% off where, you know, you're basically going to say, look, I'm going to make this one to three year commitment. Um, I'm going to get my 70% off. And there are three different types of, um, there are three different types of, there are three different ways that you can pay for this. So you can pay for everything up front. So you can just say, look, you know, what's, what's going to be my cost for that server? And you can go and you can pay for that up front. You can pay partially up front and partially later. So we're going to say partially. I don't know if that has two L's or one. We'll just go with two. Partially up front. Or you can pay no up front and just kind of pay as you go. So the, the reserved instance is going to have three different models that you can pick from as well. And again, this is going to come from, you know, capacity planning. This is going to require you to understand a little bit more about what kind of hosts and what kind of servers are we putting into AWS. So you're going to have a standard deployment. Uh, you're going to have a convertible. We'll just say convert. And then you're going to have scheduled. Now, these do very, very different things. Okay, so a standard deployment is going to give you that best price, but it locks you into 
the resources. By the way, that's not an E, that's a K. Um, but it locks the resources, meaning I'm not able to change the, the dedicated resources on that server or on that EC2 instance if I need to, right? I'm locked into what I've created as a, as a server, right? It's going to give me the best price. You know, if I've said, hey, I need XYZ RAM, XYZ storage, XYZ CPU, you know, that's great. It's going to give me the best price because we're locking in that there, that Amazon is locking you in to say, hey, we're, we're never going to have all of a sudden, you know, we need to all, you know, give you more. Or we're going to know this is exactly what you have for the next year or three years. You're good to go. The problem is that you may not know what those resources are and you may need to change some of those attributes. You may need to change some of that configuration on that instance. And so this is where the, the convertible instance or the convertible re reserved instance gives you the opportunity to change some of those resources, change some of those attributes and say, look, you know, we have a little bit more flexibility in, um, in this, this instance that we need. Then the scheduled one should be pretty self-explanatory. This is where we know where we have certain peak hours, where we can say, hey, you know what? I know that at 8 o'clock in the morning it shoots way up and that at 5 p.m., you know, Eastern time it shoots way down. We can have scheduled resources that are essentially uh, – that give us more horsepower, more beef between 8 to 5, and then we can, you know, kind of tune those down, you know, outside of peak hours. So these are the different models that you can have within AWS, and I would, again, highly recommend that you come here to aws.amazon.com uh, forward slash cc2 forward slash pricing, and under each one of these, you're going to be able to say see reserved pricing and it's going to essentially bring you to a page explaining similar to what I've explained to you already. So it'll actually break down how much these things are going to cost. What would these different servers cost in this specific region? You know, how much would this cost if I paid up front versus partially up front versus all up front? So that it's going to break these things down for you in the standard, the convertible, um, again, standard convertible. These are the three-year terms. So this is going to break this all down for you. And again, the reason why I just didn't put this in a slide was because I wanted to make sure that you guys knew how to actually get here and find this information out for yourself. So again, come to this page read through the different pricing models, read and understand exactly what they are. Again, you can say see on-demand pricing. This will tell you exactly what a Linux instance will cost you as you turn it up. So when you go to turn up your EC2 instance and you say, okay, I'm going to need 32 gigs of RAM and, and eight, uh, eight virtual CPUs, how much is that going to cost me an hour for an on-demand resource? Well, this is going to be your cost per hour for that on-demand resource as long as, it, you know, for as long as it exists. So this is a great thing for you to understand, guys. Definitely come here, check out this page. I will see you guys in the next video.